Well, it's time I think we all can achieve some cosmic clarity. Welcome to SETI Astro. Well, this is going to be my public release of the beta for my AI-based deconvolution tool. Uh, I'm calling it Cosmic Clarity. This is uh, ultimately going to be a free tool for everybody, and it can work either in standalone or in PixInsight. So for those of you that don't have PixInsight, you can still utilize the, uh, utilize the sharpening tool. Uh, you can get it from my website, setiastro.com, and there's a, a link at the top for Cosmic Clarity. It'll take you to a quick page here. Currently, I only have it working on Windows. I am um, building the binaries for Macs. So right now it is, is a Windows only. Uh, you can get it here, so you click there, and it's going to open up my drive and you can download it from my drive right there. It'll be a zip file. And uh, for those of you with PixInsight, you could add this repository here and that'll download a script to interface PixInsight with the main program itself. And I do have a couple sliders down here so you can kind of see what it does. When you are done downloading the zip file, uh, and you open it, it'll, it'll look like this. You need to extract all of it to any particular folder, and then we'll, we'll direct that later. But after you're done extracting it, at that point, then it is usable. So what you're going to see in here are some path files. These are the actual AI models that are getting utilized. So as I update the sharpening models, this is where you can um, replace them in there. There's the SETI Astro Cosmic Clarity.exe. This is the, actually the core application. So when you double click this, it's actually gonna run the application. There's an input and an output folder. What you'll do is you could put in your image files into the input folder. And then when we run Cosmic Clarity, it's going to take all the image files that are in the input folder, sharpen them all and put them into the output. It needs to sharpen either 32-bit TIFF or PNG files, and they need to be non-linear. So I'll just say that one more time. 32-bit TIFF or PNG, and you want them to be non-linear. I do want to talk a little bit about the training. It was trained uh, for the stellar sharpening on just shy of 7,200 uh, different images of stars from my um, C8, from my refractor, from my Newtonian uh, at, at various sharpening levels. So it does handle some amount of aberration and um, stellar sharpening pretty well. And then for the non-stellar sharpening, it was trained on 3,800 different images across four different blur levels. So it was quite a huge amount of training that needed to be done for these models. And I'll just go ahead and run a, a singular one in the standalone. So I put in the input folder here, uh, a test image.tiff, it's 32 bit. And then you just double click cosmicclarity.exe and it's going to open a console and it should pop up with a, with a message here. What are we sharpening? Stellar, non-stellar, or both? Um, so it is case sensitive. So in this case, let's just do stellar sharpening. You'll go and click OK. And then it's going to ask you an amount. So this is between a zero and a one. One being let the IEI fully sharpen it as much as it thinks it needs to. Uh, and then zero means absolutely no sharpening at all. Uh, I would, you know, I would recommend starting at a lower value and seeing how your particular image responds. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm going to go like a, like a 0.7, click OK. And then it's going to tell you that it is sharpening the test image.tiff. 
If you do have GPU acceleration enabled, it's going to use your GPU. If you uh, don't have GPU acceleration enabled, it'll use your CPU. And it is, uh, it is pretty darn fast. And then it puts the sharpened image into the output. And I've opened both the images up in PixInsight here. So this was our test image from before. And there's the test image after. I think it does a, a fabulous job sharpening up the stars and stuff. And we can go ahead and uh, compare it if you want uh, to something like Blur Exterminator. I don't recommend doing that. If you have Blur Exterminator, you already have the gold standard. This is, this is like the golf cart compared to a Rolls Royce, right? So it's, 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 it's not of the same, it's not even in the same like realm of uh, sharpening, but I know everybody's going to anyway. So we might as well, we might as well do one test here. And for the test, since on my sharpened image, I only did stellar, I'm gonna move the non-stellar to zero and just leave sharpened stars at, at the default 0.5. Okay, here's blur X's and here's mine. So let's just kind of, I guess we'll zoom in a little further and just give them a comparison. So here is my cosmic clarity and the blur exterminator. And it, it is interesting the some of the differences you could see, uh, just depending on what the AI thought should be brighter or sharper or or whatever the case may be. Uh, they they both are a little different, and it's it. This whole experiment really did tell me that even even something like Blur Exterminator is, uh, you know, sharpening based on what it thinks as well. Like in, like in this case, Blur Exterminator, you could see some of these items over here. And then on mine, those those stellar features stay stellar and, and separate it. So it is interesting, um, just kind of the differences between the, the models, right? Now, if you do have PixInsight, you can go ahead and add my repository. I'll have it in the link in the description below, but it is my Cosmic Clarity repository. It's gonna be under script SETI Astro Cosmic Clarity. Now the script is pretty simple. There's a dropdown. It should default to the active window. But on the very first time you run it, you're going to have to click the little wrench. You need to tell the script where the folder is. <laughs> so you're going to have to navigate to wherever you extract it, your zip file, SETI Astro Cosmic Clarity, double click into it, where you'll see the input, output, and internal folders, and then just click select folder. That should save it from session to session. Uh, so you should only have to do that once. You have your options here for stellar, non-stellar, or both. And on the both, it's gonna go non-stellar, then stellar. And there's an option for if it is linear data, but we'll, we'll look at that in a second. So let's just go ahead on this test data again, just, we'll just go stellar, we'll give it like a, like a 0.8 and click okay. A warning is gonna pop up to say, be sure to select 32 bit. Uh, it, it's just a reminder because when this next screen pops up, sometimes PixInsight will put it on like eight bit or 16 bit. Be sure you have it on 32-bit IEEE. Then click OK. And then um, it's going to say, check the console for updates. And probably in your taskbar is a, a console that popped up. And that's where the actual updates are going to happen in here. And then it's going to do some items back in the background and close the dialog. And then it's going to... Um, Take that sharpened image and uh, replace your current image 
with it. So you have a, a nice kind of before and after you could look at flipping through the, the undo button. There's before and there's after. If you are in Pix Insight, it can be ran with linear data because in, uh, in the background I could have Pix Insight stretch it up, do the sharpening and revert it back to the linear data. So those of you running it in standalone, uh, just remember you have to have nonlinear data. But if you are in Pix Insight, you can run it on linear data. So I just have the uh, my Galaxy image here, red channel in the linear state. All I did was run ADBE on it. Um, and then we got to make sure to check images in the linear state. Uh, for the non-stellar amount, you want to try to kind of match that to whatever the, the PSF of the stars is a little bit. It's a little counterintuitive. If the smaller the number is, the stronger the sharpening is going to look, right? It's looking at smaller scale structure to try to sharpen, the smaller that number is. So if you have something ridiculously small, like a one, then it's going to look essentially at just the surrounding pixels and try to sharpen that one pixel based on that. So you're going to get a lot of uh, noise and stuff that's sharp and that really shouldn't be. And then on the flip side, if you have a really, really big, like an eight, now it's looking, you know, eight standard deviations away from that, that single pixel to try to sharpen. And unless your image is very blurry, there's probably not data out there for that. Uh, so just remember, you know, the bigger the number, the kind of the softer the sharpening. And then uh, the stellar amount remains the same. That's just how much we're going to blend in the full power, what it thinks it should sharpen the stars for versus... Uh, zero would be no sharpening of the stars at all. And I'm just going to click OK. Uh, be sure to select 32 bit again. Yep. Hit OK. And now in the background, it stretched the initial image. Now it's going to run cosmic clarity on that stretched image. And it's going to run it twice, right? We had it on both. So it's going to do the non stellar sharpening followed by the stellar sharpening. Then it's going to bring that image back into PixInsight and apply it to the apply it to the main image. So we can go ahead and make a we'll just make a clone of that so we can compare them. And here's our before and after. Before and after. I just got a, a couple more examples here. One, I have the the Eagle Nebula here. I think we'll we'll go ahead and give this a go. This is again in linear. It's linear data. It's just color SHO palette. I kind of zoomed in on a on a spot where we can kind of see a lot of intricate things that that may be changed. I'm just gonna go ahead and run Cosmic Clarity. Be sure to check it's in the linear state. I'm gonna go ahead and um, yeah, just I'm almost almost just defaults and, and give it a shot. I'm gonna click OK. Now it runs through a background stretch prior to uh, saving it in the back. So you'll just have to wait for that to happen and then the save screen will come up. Be sure it's in 32 bit. Now here's the console that popped up. It is a much larger image, so there's uh, more pieces to it. All right, and, and here's the after, so I'm gonna make a quick clone of that and kind of revert back to our initial. All right, I pulled off a clone of it and I reran STF just so we're stretched the same. Here's the after and the before. Let's see how everything is 
getting better contrast, sharpening up, and the uh, the details in that darker structures really, really changed. As a last example, I got my uh, final image of my Andromeda, and let's just apply some additional sharpening to that. We're gonna go ahead, script City Astro Cosmic Clarity, and I just wanna sharpen up the non-stellar features, and I'm gonna leave it at, at the four, and click OK. Now here's a great example. See, you wanted to put it in 8-bit, so be sure to be sure to always check that into 32-bit. So here's the after and before. Before and after, and it, and it does add a lot of contrast in there. Since it was an 8-bit file originally, it, it does have a, a little bit of graininess, but it doesn't hurt to uh, hit it with a little bit of noise reduction at the end anyways after final sharpening. So now you could have additional sharpening at the very end as well to help enhance those, those images at the very, very end of your processing. So once again, uh, this, this is still, still in the works. This is still beta, right? Um, I, I still need to continuously improve the modeling. I want to add more and more and more to the models to make them as, as good as possible. If you already have Blur Exterminator, I'm telling you, you already, you already have the gold standard uh, for uh, deconvolution. But I'm hoping this is going to help those individuals that don't have PixInsight, so they can't even get Blur Exterminator, or those where the, the price tag may just be a, a little too steep for their needs right now to, to get Blur Exterminator. Again, you can get it on my website. I hope we have a lot of fun with this. Those serial users out there, I know you've been looking for AI sharpening as well. Please comment, like, and subscribe.